Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So in my previous video, we learned how to integrate Tailwind CSS into the Angular framework. And today we're actually gonna be reviewing, well, we're not gonna review it. We're actually gonna jump straight in. We're gonna dive into the code. We're gonna consume Tailwind CSS. We're gonna see how easy it is to use and how you can save so much time in development by actually using the Tailwind CSS framework. So if you like what I'm about to do here, make sure you stop, take a moment, give me a thumbs up, comment below, and always hit that subscribe and bell for notifications so that you stay up to date with my latest and greatest videos. Let's get started. So we'll begin first by erasing everything within this app.component.html file. Um, so that would be everything here that is just going to be deleted. So we'll press Command A and get rid of everything. We don't need it. That should give us a blank page. And in fact, we have a blank page here. That's good. And the next thing we want to do is we want to create a new section. So we're going to start by creating a comment. We're going to say begin primary content section. And then another comment and primary content section. Okay, now in between here, what we want to do is we want to create an actual section. So there you go. Okay, so now we have our section here. Uh, first thing we want to do here is we want to go straight to the Tailwind documentation. Now, immediately you're going to notice from the homepage that they have this uh, card. So in this card, what we can do is we can copy everything from here and then we can paste that within our section. It's that easy, guys. So this source, this is an image source. We're just going to right click the uh, image that they have here, copy the image address, and then we are going to paste it. There you go, like so. And now if we look at our website, we literally have the same exact component minus the text here that's dark. We want to make it light. So what we can do is on the figure, we can say text dash white. And what that does is it makes the text white. So it was super, super simple, guys. We didn't even have to do anything other than copy and paste an HTML element that already contained all the necessary object oriented CSS classes within them. So this is the power of Tailwind. Now, when you compare it to, you know, to something like Bootstrap, Tailwind is definitely the winner for me. Um, Bootstrap has lots of use cases as well. It's very, very popular. It's been popular for quite some time, but it doesn't do what Tailwind does, right? So Tailwind is only for the styling, for the CSS, to make things easier on the developer, to allow you to speed up the development without having to even jump into the CSS files and modify it. So if you're running a project and let's say you're working together with a team, now what if somebody on a team doesn't know much about CSS and they jump straight into the CSS file to modify their change and it breaks everything else? These kinds of things do happen. Um, it's very fragile in many cases, but with Tailwind, it's something that you avoid, right? So there's no need for the developer to jump straight into the CSS. They can just modify their styles within, within the HTML element itself. So that's a very, very powerful thing, and it's a part of Tailwind CSS. Now, I'm not going to review every single CSS class that exists, but we're going to go a little bit through the docs and take a look at what's happening. So when we look at the docs here, if we scroll down on the left-hand side, you've got a number of different sections. So the layouts, so maybe you want a container. Uh, they have Flexbox and Grid, so maybe you want to have a grid. So, for example, if I click on this Flex Basis, you see they have a, a very well-documented, um, I guess, uh, documented documentation. <laughs> uh, but what's happening here is you look at the div, right? So it's a wrapper div. It's got a Flex class. So the Flex class makes it into a Flexbox, right? Then you have this flex row. So it's telling it, hey, we're doing a row here. So this div is equivalent to a row. And then we wanna split it. So here we've got this basis hyphen one slash four. So that makes this box uh, one fourth. And then again, you have a one fourth 
this is a one fourth box. So far we have two of one fourth, and then you've got a one half, which takes up half, right? So it's taking up half of the row. So if we were to copy this here, just as an example, and then we come back to our code and we pasted it up here. Let's just do a little pasting here. And now instead of having our figure down here, we right click this and copy it. We can get rid of it. And now let's just say we wanted to paste it inside of this one fourth. So now that we pasted it inside of the one fourth, all we have to do is look and we've got one fourth. It's that simple guys. So we just created a tailwind card styled and everything looks pretty. It's a uh, component in HTML and CSS, and we didn't even have to jump into the CSS files. Now, that's as far as I'm going to go with this video. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed what I have going on here, and hopefully this was helpful to some of you. You can definitely keep looking at the docs. They have a lot you can do, such as padding, mar padding margins, you know, sizing, uh, typography. You got different font styles and different things that you can change. All of that stuff can be changed within the HTML element itself. Uh, so this is very, very handy dandy framework. I hope you guys, you know, try using it for yourself. It's really, really powerful stuff. Uh, so that being said, if you like this kind of video, make sure you hit me with a thumbs up, comment below. Uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe and bell for notifications, and I'll continue to make more content just like this. Thanks for watching, guys.